Everyone aspires to be the best at something, but when this confidence transforms into taking others for granted, the universe might deliver a lesson. Understanding that there's always someone better out there is the key to humility, which is what truly defines the strongest individuals. My name is Mina, and I've been married to my husband Thomas for two years. When we decided to tie the knot, Thomas warned me about his troublesome sister, suggesting she might become a burden. As an only child, the prospect of having a sister excited me. But Thomas' words also sparked anxiety and curiosity about the kind of trouble she could bring. Now, two years into our marriage, I fully comprehend and have experienced what Thomas meant. I was born into a relatively wealthy family where my father runs a mid-sized trading company. He is well-informed and progressive in his thinking. My parents always respected my decisions, creating an environment where I could freely explore my interests. The 2008 Lehman Brothers collapse, when I was just an 11-year-old elementary school student, intrigued me. Witnessing the significant impact it had on the world and Japan, I became fascinated by how a disruption in the flow of funds could cause a global panic. This sparked my interest in researching financial circulation. Naturally curious and apparently quite intelligent, my parents had me take an IQ test, and the results exceeded the normal range. As I delved into this newfound interest, many aspects became clear, but my curiosity never waned throughout middle and high school. Continuing my exploration of this topic, I pursued a major in college that allowed me to deepen my understanding. As I delved further, my eagerness to apply my knowledge led me to venture into day trading. Encouraged by my professor, who highlighted day trading as an excellent way to experience capital flow firsthand. I embraced the challenge, aware of the need for careful management to avoid debt. My research efforts were extensive as I identified statistically favorable stocks for day trading. Armed with a modest sum from all the allowances I had saved up, I engaged in buying and selling the same stock within the same day, with the goal of capitalizing on quick results. My predictions proved accurate. And though the initial increase was modest, I steadily grew my funds by repeating this process and gradually increasing my investment. In a year, I managed to amplify the initial amount by more than 50 times. While the sum may not have been significant on a larger scale, my primary concern wasn't about the magnitude of the achievement. What mattered most to me was whether the answers I had derived from my research were correct. During my university seminar, I encounter a student named Thomas, known for his analytical skills. Our shared perspectives on various topics drew us close. And after graduation, despite my initial plan to join my father's company, Thomas proposed an alternative path. He identified a job at a foreign investment firm, a proposition he presented on the day of our graduation ceremony. Following a celebration, Thomas confessed his feelings, and without hesitation, I said yes. His intelligence had always been a source of comfort, and his understanding nature made me feel at ease. As we both embarked on new journeys, gaining experience, our relationship continued to strengthen. Inspired by the concept of trade at my father's company, I dedicated myself to researching foreign companies to gain an advantage in negotiations and established a robust foundation for our deals. Thomas, with his inherent analytical skills, excelled in identifying profitable investment opportunities, earning high praise within his company. Despite our busy schedules, we maintained our connection through dates that provided refreshing breaks before diving back into our respective work. Over the five years of our relationship, we became indispensable to each other, evolving into a reliable support system. Deeply immersed in our exciting careers, we decided it was the right time to take the next step. Thomas proposed, expressing his desire to spend the rest of his life with me. Without hesitation, I accepted his proposal, eager to begin our life together. However, when it was time for a family meeting, Thomas disclosed something important about his sister, Alice. According to Thomas, Alice, his sister two years younger, was known for being challenging. He cautioned that she might cause some discomfort or inconvenience. Alice, Exceptionally bright from a young age, developed a competitive spirit, looking down on others, including Thomas, 
whom she considered inferior. Even though Thomas was regarded as a prodigy, Alice claimed superiority, joining a rival investment and consulting firm to compete with him in her career. Thomas was worried that his engagement might affect Alice's pride, as she always sought to prove herself superior. Having no close friends and seemingly without a significant other, Alice appeared to harbor insecurities, masked by a brave face. Thomas was concerned about how she might react, fearing that she would intensify her efforts to demonstrate her strength in the face of our engagement. Attempting to reassure Thomas with a light-hearted, it's okay, proved ineffective as his worry seemed unending. This only heightened my curiosity about his intense sister, Alice. Finally meeting her at a family gathering, her sharp, intelligent beauty was unmistakable, though a certain coldness lingered. Whether that was intrinsic to her nature or a result of my preconceived notions, I couldn't discern. Thomas's parents, in contrast, were kind and humorous, putting me at ease about getting along with them. However, beyond the initial greeting, Alice remained silent, merely eating her meal while scrutinizing me as if assessing my worth. After the meeting, as everyone was leaving, Alice pulled me aside. Curious about the person I would be, she expressed disappointment, dismissing me as just a girl who secured a job at her parents' company and likely slacking off. She asserted her financial prowess, claiming to move large amounts of money and make significant profits, placing herself on a level far superior to mine. According to Alice, Thomas settling for someone like me was disappointing, and she concluded by stating that today's gain was realizing how much I fell short of her standards. Stunned and unsure how to respond, Alice left the room, leaving me there. Thomas returned, noticing I hadn't left with Alice. Concerned, he asked if something had happened. In response to Alice's jab, I laughed it off, assuring Thomas that it was just a minor comment. Thomas apologized for his sister's rudeness, but I reassured him that I wasn't bothered. It didn't hurt, but I couldn't help but wonder what would happen the next time we met, particularly at the wedding. Strangely, I found myself looking forward to it, anticipating the interesting dynamics that might unfold. Surprised by my response, Thomas and I went on to have a grand wedding attended by family, friends, and colleagues from both sides. We pledged our eternal love and reveled in the joyous occasion, but Alice appeared grumpy and irritated right from the start. Thomas had mentioned that Alice had neither friends nor a romantic partner, so I could somewhat understand her feelings, finding it slightly amusing. During a break for a wardrobe change, as I waited for the staff to assist me, Alice entered seemingly without reason. She remarked that my happiness was only for the day and predicted that, as a plain woman, I wouldn't get the spotlight after the wedding, insinuating that I would just leech off Thomas' earnings. Unfazed, I couldn't comprehend how anyone could be satisfied with that. She declared her intentions to climb even higher on her own and find someone better than Thomas for an even grander wedding. With that rapid-fire monologue, a self-satisfied Alice left without giving me a chance to respond. As the staff walked in just after Alice's departure, I burst into laughter at the timing. Apologizing to the puzzled staff, I started changing, realizing that Alice knew how to keep things interesting. Since the wedding, I had no contact with her. I anticipated seeing her again, perhaps at Christmas when visiting my in-laws, but an unexpected connection with Alice arose sooner than expected. My father decided to seek external consulting for asset preservation and expansion at his company. Although I offered to handle it, he insisted on bringing in outside expertise, choosing a specific firm. Upon hearing the familiar name of the consulting firm during negotiations at my father's company, a sense of recognition washed over me, but I couldn't immediately place it. To my surprise, Alice was among the representatives of the firm, and the realization dawned that it was her company. We exchanged surprise glances, but silently agreed to act as if we were meeting for the first time, keeping our sister-in-law relationship a secret from the other team members. When I discussed the situation with Thomas at home, he already knew about it, expressing frustration. He suggested I step away from the project, 
but I found the situation amusing and laughed it off. Despite my amusement, I had to maintain professionalism during the negotiations. I pointed out flaws and inadequacies in their proposals, supported by logical reasoning that unsettled them. Alice tried to counter with past examples and mathematical evidence, but my responses exposed their weak points, leaving them silent. The meeting ended in my favor, with the other team agreeing to come up with a second proposal for the next meeting. As I relaxed with coffee after they left, I received a phone call meant for me. Answering the phone, it was Alice. She acknowledged my success, but declared that someone as excellent as her couldn't be bested by me. With a parting shot about not needing guidance from someone like me, she hung up. Bursting into laughter, I held the phone, drawing curious glances from nearby colleagues. From that point on, I took full control of the meetings, with their team often scrambling to respond to my points. Alice attempted comebacks but consistently fell short, her frustration visible. When I shared this with Thomas, he revealed that Alice had never been outdone by anyone before. Additionally, he mentioned that Alice had recently faced rejection from a guy she liked, compounding her irritation. I couldn't help but let out a surprised ha huh, and stifle my laughter as a consulting project finally concluded successfully. The opposing team leader thanked us, expressing that they had learned a lot. And as everyone dispersed, Alice and I found ourselves alone. Alice, however, was not satisfied with the outcome. I'm not satisfied with how things went. I'll make sure to get the better of you next time. Just so you know, I am more excellent. I even bought a tower mansion at my age. Only someone as outstanding as me could afford a brand new tower mansion, Alice declared, emphasizing her success as an investor. With that statement, Alice left, and Thomas later confirmed that what she said was true. Alice had indeed found success as an investor and recently bought a tower mansion to live on her own. While acknowledging her undeniable talent and the achievement within her reach, I genuinely wanted to congratulate her. A few days later on the weekend, I had some business at a tower mansion. As I stopped at a certain mid-level floor, a door opened and a resident stepped out. The resident and I locked eyes and both exclaimed in surprise. It was Alice. Why are you here? If you're not invited to the party, did you come to clean? I questioned. It seemed that today was the day of Alice's celebrity home party, as she had mentioned. Not at all. I'm here to deliver something to an acquaintance on this floor. You have an acquaintance here, and you came down from where? Alice replied. Well, my home is on the top floor of this mansion. Naturally, I had to come down. I countered reminding her that she and Thomas lived in a single-story house because Thomas couldn't handle heights. Alice revealed that the tower mansion was her office and workshop. As we argued loudly in the hallway, a voice behind us asked, Alice, what's going on? Alice turned and said, Sorry, senior. The woman who had spoken and three other women looked at us with concern. I apologize for not greeting you downstairs. I was just dealing with. Ah, uh, Alice seemed at a loss for words. The woman Alice called Senior looked at me, searching her memory, and exclaimed in surprise, Aren't you Maya? Alice was visibly confused. The Senior explained, Don't you know? This is Mrs. Mia, our new external board director starting this month. She's also known as the investment goddess whom Alice admires. Alice was speechless at this unexpected revelation, and the Senior continued, also, she owns a significant share of your company, which made her a board director. Alice was overwhelmed by this unexpected turn of events. The senior added, Alice, while extremely talented, has a poor reputation regarding teamwork and attitude towards colleagues. If she can't improve, she can't continue working in her current role. Alice was already knocked out by the harsh reality, kneeling and collapsed on the floor. Later, Thomas told me that Alice, once a fierce wolf had become a small dog. It seemed she finally understood that there's always someone above her. Reflecting on my previous attitude, I felt a bit guilty for finding it all so amusing. Alice has become a lesson for me to never underestimate anyone and to treat others with respect. Thomas apologized for not being more involved in these events, 
but it's not his responsibility at all. His concern showed his good nature, and I love him all the more for it. My current hope is to start a family with Thomas soon. I can't wait to enjoy life as a family of three. If Alice changes her mindset and broadens her perspective, she'll surely find friends and a partner soon. One night, I had a dream of a family of three. And by the end of next year, we'll be a family of five, triplets from the cabbage patch. I woke up sweating but couldn't help laughing at the prospect.